All right, cool. We're live now. Awesome. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and get started. What's up, guys? How's it going, everyone? So we're going to do the entire breakdown, as usual, fundamental outlook, and then we're going to go into the technical analysis uh, with Stefanos and answer any questions that you guys might have here. So let's awesome. go ahead and get started. So and just like a, a little, like, I don't know something to say real quick but mm -hmm. um when it comes to these breakdowns we try to do them as early as we can throughout the week but we're both super busy but you know i hope i hope you guys get a ton out of it i think there's a ton of information packed into these breakdowns yep. especially on the fundamental side where really doesn't matter where in the week that you're watching this so mm -hmm. um do with that what you will but uh i, I hope you guys get a lot out of it take yep. notes and and if you have any questions like charman said at the end just ask us yep absolutely um and so, you know, just going off of that, like, no matter, you know, whether you're swing trading, scalping, day trading, whatever it is, uh, these breakdowns are there to help you out. So then throughout the week, you understand what kind of fundamentals to look out for. What is the week setting up for pretty much all the important news that has come out over the weekend or even on a Monday? And then what are the things that you should be looking out for throughout the entire week? Hello, hello. So we're going to start off with the fundamental analysis. As always, I'm going to try to go through uh, the important points in these articles, but here's the title of it. So you guys are you know, more than welcome to go and look it up. If you don't have Bloomberg, uh, there's a lot of other free resources. If you just like, you know, type in the same exact articles uh, title, then you'll see a lot of other free resources. But let's go um, ahead and get started. Hello, hello. So last week we talked about Powell, we talked about Warren kind of going after him saying that hey he hasn't been the best uh, leader and things like that. Uh, but we also talked about how when a country is in a recession, when an economy is still trying to go into that little bit of economic growth cycle, that little phase, then it's very hard to replace a central bank's official, right? So you don't want to be doing that because other officials are going to come in and they're going to come in with different views. They're going to come in with different agendas, pretty much uh, whatever they think is the best for the economy. And that itself, if your country is already kind of in that disruption, in that re uh, recession, you don't want to bring in a whole another viewpoint and ca cause like a whole another disruption. Right. Because that adoption of viewpoints takes a quite a bit of time itself, like a couple of months, if not more. Um, I believe that's why Warren kind of went on the offensive there. Right. Um, there's somebody that she wants specifically to, to run the Fed. Right. And uh, it, it's very partisan. And I, you know, right. that's how it is now. And so that's why the central banks, they're supposed to be independent, but they're really not. You know, underlying, mm. if you start looking at these details and things like that, they're really not independent, right? So anything that happens with uh, the government itself, with the administration itself, like all of that ultimately does affect the decisions of these central banks. So they're not really independent, <clears throat> too independent of whatever else is going on. They're pretty much, you know, either cleaning up the mess or they're trying to fix the economy to the best of their ability, whatever um, that may be, right? So in this case, President Joe Biden, he's still retaining his confidence in Powell. Um, and that's the sentiment that they have been putting out this entire time where Biden has been saying, you know, if they are going to replace somebody else, they need to find that person ASAP and they need to put their confidence in that person. But right now, Biden has been, you know, still showing his confidence in uh, Powell this entire time. And so that's one of the major things I just want to touch on really quickly. It's not that big of a, an article. So that's pretty much what the the key uh, areas were on this uh, article. And then we're going to continue on to treasuries. So here you have the, the title. Treasuries fall as energy price surge unleashes reflation bets. So we know there's a lot of already inflation going on. We know there's a lot of you know, with energy and all of that. So actually in the UK, the government has actually told their people that, hey, get used to having energy and or food and fuel shortages, right? So if a government's already telling you that, and if your country relies heavily on imports and exports, you know, then you want to be very careful about uh, pretty much the investments into that country, right? So if you're mm -hmm. exporting a lot and that's pretty much re what you rely on, then you want to understand like, how do these fundamentals come together and how they going to kind of foreshadow what are some problems that you're already running into and what are some potential problems that you're going to continue running into if you're not able to address these issues on time. 
So right now what's going on is majority of these governments and even financial institutions and international institutions, IMF, World Bank, and like, you know, all these other institutions, what they're doing is they're pushing or they're incentivizing governments to continue moving towards clean energy, right? Move away from like oil, move away from like coal and all that type of stuff and move towards clean energy. So when I start reading these kind of things, that's pretty much what's going through my head where they're actually incentivizing and the government is helping these sectors, whether it's electric vehicles, clean energy, solar energy, whatever it is, the government in the US specifically is actually helping these industries um, you know, become a little bit more sustainable throughout this entire recession and actually have growth in the future. So when you're reading something like this, or like especially when I'm reading something like an article like this where energy prices are surging, that tells me that now the supply is starting to decrease, right? The demand is still going to be there. There's no way as a country that you're gonna be able to shift completely from coal and just oil and all of that stuff into clean energy, especially in the next two to three months. It's just not gonna happen, mm-hmm. right? But you kind of die down that demand itself over time by bringing alternatives, which at this case right now is clean energy. So when there's low supply and there's high demand for it, then what usually happens? Prices go up, right? Mm-hmm. And that's basically what we're seeing at the moment. Also, to stay on that for a second, Mm -hmm. um, keep in mind, guys, the last three business downturns in the U.S. uh, before the pandemic, every single time uh, oil has doubled, the price of oil doubled, and it was at double of what it previously Mm -hmm. was. So keep that in mind for what's going on right now. And all these signs we point out and all these signs we see and, you know, whether it's articles that we read or you guys watch us or listen to somebody else in the market Mm -hmm. uh, or your mentor, um, Every, every single time, you just got to pay attention to the fact that there are signs out there, and this is one we're seeing right now. Right. And so another key point that I wanted to highlight here was the Federal Reserve saying that the asset purchase tapering could begin as soon as November also mm. played a part in this, right? Inflation, of course, the yield soared on higher inflation and expected rate increases by the Bank of England. Another thing here is... In England, they're saying that they're going to start, uh, you know, they're talking about increasing the interest rates, but they haven't even talked about tapering yet, right? You cannot increase your interest rates without tapering because you're just making the situation even worse, right? Mm. That's just not how that, it's not that sequence that it goes (laughs) with, right? Basic economics is what we're talking about. And even still here, they haven't confirmed, the Federal Reserve has not confirmed that the asset purchasing will actually start in November. They're saying it could begin as soon as November. It could still get pushed out to December. It could still get pushed out to January, right? But this is the sentiment that now they're starting to play with pretty much at this point where they're not giving you like concrete decisions uh, that yes, we are going to start doing this. Talking about like, okay, now this is a discussion that we've started to talk about and these are things that we are looking forward to, but there has not been any decision that has been made yet. It's funny you say basic economics, but it feels like some of these people in charge don't know basic economics and how it actually mm-hmm. works. And it's it it's just kind of frustrating, you know, like people yeah. that we put confidence in and, and uh, not that we elect Fed officials, but you know, th- these people control the value of the dollar. And when it seems like some of the quotes or some of the things that they say Mm -hmm. seems like they don't even understand inflation or don't even understand economics or they're just flat out lying it's very frustrating their job is pretty much to uh i'm just continuing down to uh come to another key point but their job is pretty much to make sure that the economy does not go into a recession right Mm -hmm. that it's sustainable and that uh, you know the dollar is pretty much strong at a level where it's not too strong where it becomes too expensive so now it starts impacting like the imports and exports and manufacturing and all that stuff but it's not too cheap either right so their job is to kind of stay in between and that's where the problem comes in where if you know that there's a problem if you know there is inflation you have to taper back you have to increase interest rates but then again at that point you have a problem of debt ceiling coming in, you have inflation coming in, you have, you know, so many other issues coming in. In the case of even debt ceiling, like when Andy and I were talking about it in that video, and I think he explained it very well as well. So if you guys haven't gone back and watched that video, you definitely should. Uh, he explains very well what's happening with the debt ceiling and the real estate and mortgages and all that stuff. But even in that case, you increase the debt ceiling, you still risk having a weaker dollar. 
right? And if you don't increase the debt ceiling and you do end up defaulting, then again, you have a weaker dollar. So what do you do in that case? Taper. <laughs> Even if you do taper, but then again, there's your your economy is just not at the stage of that growth I'm just, just yet. I'm just saying the only things they can do, mm -hmm. you know? Right. Um, so now we have NFP that's coming out. So September employment data on Friday may seal the deal for the Fed to announce tapering of its asset purchases in November. So you have NFP coming out uh, this upcoming Friday. So you want to be very careful on that data that's coming out. You want to understand like, you know, pretty much everything that has led up to data. So th that data itself. So throughout the week, you get a lot of employment data. You have the unemployment claims that comes out every Thursday. So you could definitely go back and take a look at the last four or five unemployment data in the month of September and kind of understand like, okay, what's going on there, right? And what are the numbers like and those kind of things. And then you also have like Jolt's job openings, for example, and all those, you know, different data points that kind of lead up to NFP. So if you're going to be trading NFP this Friday, then understand that this is a very important data point specifically for the Fed. And even, you know, just this sentence itself sums it up. Are they going to be tapering, right? That's where that decision is going to be coming from. So be very careful be when you're trading NFP this Friday. Trade the reaction. Right. Don't trade the actual news. Give it a couple of minutes after the news comes out and then look for your trade opportunity. 10, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then we have Brexit, <laughs> as always. And so we have France threatens UK power supply as Brexit tensions escalate. So this is uh, pretty interesting because there were a ton of different articles about Brexit and the power supply and energy and all that in general. And one of the key things was that Europe is now trying to leverage uh, their you know, power supply and their energy in order to kind of force the UK into certain decisions, uh, especially when it comes to access to the British waters, because again, that is still a problem. That is still something that they have not completely agreed on yet and they have not made a decision completely on yet right so they're trying to use that in order to leverage getting access to the british waters and that's where this exactly says that the european union could look to leverage its electricity supplies to the uk in an effort to force boris johnson's government to grant access to british fishing waters so now you still have Brexit tensions that are still going on, and now obviously we're going to wait until the UK kind of responds to, you know, this forcing, I guess, in a way you could say, um, or this leveraging. Mm. And then you can continue read, to read, but those are some of the key points that I want to highlight here in this article. Good old Brexit. Yep. Never goes away. And then this is uh, something that I wanted you guys to kind of keep in the back of your mind as well, just to understand what's happening you know, globally. You still have Evergrande problem going on. It hasn't gone anywhere yet. And so Evergrande shares halted amid report of unit stake sale. And so still here, they're still having the same problem, you know, transactions and you know, liquidity and all this stuff. And so Hobson Development Holdings plans to acquire a 51% stake in the property services unit. But another, this is why this was interesting to me because I read this and right after that you have another developer who is highly leveraged and they're also facing troubles, right? And that is coming from, this is pretty much showing you indications that there is stress rising in China's property sector. And so we, we are starting to see that kind of rippling effect now coming into play, obviously internally, domestically into that sector and then let's see how it falls into other sectors within China and then outside of China how does it have a spillover effect. So these are some of the fundamentals I want you guys to kind of keep in the back of your mind when it comes to global economy. Again, feel free to go back and take a look at these articles and read into detail but the key thing is understand what kind of sentiment are they trying to push out. Your job isn't to understand every single detail or remember every single detail. But your job is to understand how does all of this kind of play together and what's really going on. Absolutely. So let's move into the economic calendar for the week. This week, you had bank holidays. You, Go ahead. I'm sorry, can you hear those uh, updates? Yeah, slightly. <laughs> okay, all right. Let me see if... Keep going. I'm just going to try and mute for it. Sure. So on Sunday, started off with an Australian bank holiday and then Chinese as well. So kind of a slow start. 
And then Monday, yesterday, we had OPEC meetings all day. This is where they determine that oil supply and demand. If the demand is not picking up to the level that they want, then obviously they're not going to be increasing the supply. So this is legit like an oil cartel in a way who kind of determines uh, whether you're going to have enough oil supply or not. Right? These are the major countries that are coming together uh, who are making these decisions. So if you're trading oil, if you're looking at the energy and all this type of stuff, which obviously we're starting to see is having an effect throughout economies, this is something you want to be paying attention to. Again, you could just click on the folder here, you can click on the latest release and click on um, you know whatever their meeting was here and kind of go through uh, what did they conclude and what are the decisions that they came up with. So you have that, and then you also had, again, another bank holiday. You had President Biden speaking yesterday. And then going into Tuesday, so today, you had a lot of Euro news coming out in the London session, not so much of GDP, just the final services PMI. And then you had the services PMI in the U.S. coming out in New York session. And then you had ECB president speaking, along with the FOMC member. And now in a couple of hours, you're going to have, if you're trading the New Zealand dollar, then the interest rate's coming out. So not too bad of a start to the week just yet. Just some speeches, things like that coming out. Nothing too high impact. That's going to create a ton of volatility. And this is something you want to pay attention to because now we're sitting at key levels for a lot of pairs. And, you know, Stephanos is going to go over that. But you're sitting at key levels for a lot of these pairs on higher time frames. So you want to be paying attention to are there going to be any higher impact data that we're setting up for this week, right? You're having a little bit of a slow week, kind of a breather in the, in the week. You might even see like some consolidation setting up for some higher impact data coming out. On Wednesday, you have ADP non-farm. This is where your preparation for NFP pretty much starts. So look at ADP non-farm employment change, right? And then after that, continuing down on Thursday, you have unemployment claims. You have the challenger job cuts all of these things so this is another preparation for nfp and then on friday you have nfp coming out so you have pretty much three data points so far that you can use in order to prepare for um, nfp on friday and that you have fomc members speaking so not too much as you can see this entire week not too much coming out but an important uh, data point is going to be nfp this this uh friday coming up friday that's going to help uh, the Federal Reserve kind of make their decision about whether or not they're going to start tapering soon and then or can they still continue to push it out like they have it for a while. Yeah, and before we move on from uh, the economic calendar and fundamentals, uh, keep in mind, especially you guys like just getting into trading or just getting into like learning more about fundamentals and getting more into economics, mm -hmm. we're going through unprecedented times right now. Um, but a good thing to watch is for the, how economies react mm -hmm. to some of these decisions that are being made. So you have countries that they have economies contracting, but they want to increase interest rates uh, yeah. more than expected or more than other countries. You get Canada, you get New Zealand and you have Australia all wanting to increase interest rates with contracting economies. Mm -hmm. You then have the United States, you have and any of the euro countries and then also japan all with lower in, uh, interest rates and very hesitant on raising interest rates or tapering anytime soon mm -hmm. so just keep in mind over the next couple months over the next year you know what's going to be happening with these economies what's going to happen with these countries from these decisions being made mm -hmm. and then you can also kind of back test that by going back to 2008 and looking at what these countries you know the decisions that they made and see how the currency reacted to that and what ended up happening um you know down the road so right. uh, it's just something good to pay attention to it's it's kind of like a game just paying attention all right i think this is going to happen uh you know based on them doing this and then again go back and back test and and see what happened in 08 uh during that market tank I'm glad you brought that up because that's one good way to do it. But also understand that there has been a lot of framework changes in some central banks and of governments. Course. So take mm -hmm. that into account, but also just understand basic economics and how is it all playing together, right? Mm -hmm. The decisions that they made in 2008, 2009, 2007, all that, they're doing the same exact thing. Now it's just a different variation of it, exactly. right? Yeah. But also look up those frameworks, pick like one or two countries, whatever pair that you trade, if you're trading GJ, look up you know the uk and japan 
what were the changes in their frameworks and how are they kind of how is that kind of shaping their decisions right now and where are we headed next and like right now it's it's been the pandemic and yeah. also inflation back then it was the subprime mortgage crisis that really top that bubble but right now we're in a bubble because of the decisions made back then as well yep so um but yeah definitely a lot different right now mm -hmm. uh, but still a ton that you could pay attention to with uh some of the decisions that they want to make absolutely all right let's go ahead and get started on yes let's get analysis. into the uh fundamentals or, or not fundamentals but technicals over here mm -hmm. um and I, again I'm, i know a lot of you guys tune in every week to uh to see what we're doing but i'm just going to do a brief breakdown of some of these higher time frames uh and some of these trends that we've been in so pretty quick we've been in this multi-year down trend over here tapping for the third time over here but again our main confluence is support and resistance mm -hmm. but we have our support right down here Wrong tool. Support down here from the 2008 market crash. Then we have breaks it over here. Then we had the pandemic right over here. Price brought right back down. Never broke the lows of the 2008 market crash. And then we came right back up to 156. Mm -hmm. So zooming into 156 over here. And you guys want to get into the nitty gritty. The you know point out a possible trade that you could possibly take. Um, but first we got to break down some of this stuff. So 156, obviously a very significant level over here uh, that we've been tapping into. But 149 is a very strong level right now as well. And something that you definitely want to pay attention to over here. You can extend this all the way to the left as well. It's rejected multiple times at 156. But we got these candle body hides over here to the left that price now came right back down into. But I'll break that down in a second. We've been bullish ever since COVID, right? And right now we're kind of reacting to that trend over here. COVID happened, you know, so much went on over here, but central banks ended up jumping in and we've been bullish ever since all the way up to 156. Mm -hmm. But now, as I said, I was gonna get back into it. We've been in this multi-week downtrend. This is about four months, uh, yeah, not multi-week, but multi-month uh, downtrend coming right back down to 156. And it looks like we're trying to hold support over here. If you want to take a look at the, the candlestick anatomy of these candle bodies and wicks, you see that this candle came down, created its bottom wick already on the month. The month just started. It's October 5th. We created our bottom wick over here. A lot of talks about uh, the Bank of England increasing interest rates. Um, and, you know, we're, we're very bullish over here. We have not broken the, the trend that we've been in, but we are very bullish, especially for the beginning of the month. Could we come up and retest 156 if they end up um, increasing interest rates over here? We very well could, but things need to happen before that. Before you go on to the weekly time frame, another thing that I want you guys to keep in mind is basic structure, right? What happens with basic structure? Price never just moves in one simple direction, right? So in this case, uh, from like the beginning of 2021, you've had a nice sell-off happening. Obviously, the market's just not going to continue dropping down. It's not going to happen, right? You always have market, even in a downtrend, giving you pullbacks. So in this case, you know, is price coming back to previous resistance areas, maybe to just give you a retest and then continue down? That's what you want to be keeping in your mind, in the back of your mind. No Absolutely. matter what time frame you look on. Yep. And you can see that a little bit clearer on the weekly mm -hmm. and the daily specifically, because we've been respecting these lower highs over here just kind of pushing down tapping into it retesting the previous low creating a new low and then coming right back up to retest the previous area yep. so we got a pretty significant resistance over here since tapping into 149 down here we ended up coming right back up to retest this previous area over here significant area you can always uh mm -hmm. mark off like a key level right here somewhere around 152 uh, we held that resistance and can always uh, move that as well. But, um, but then we ended up coming all the way back down to retest this previous level, right? But we keep rejecting multiple times over here. Mm -hmm. um, this current weekly candle um, ended up opening, creating that bottom candle and then flipping bullish, continuing right back into this area. But things need to happen for us to start breaking this, right? And start breaking different levels. You do have this resistance right up here. 
If you're in a monthly or weekly or daily downtrend, like you need to have just as strong uh, confirmation from fundamentals as technical to help you break past that trend. 100%. Absolutely. So I'm looking over here at the daily. I'm going to adjust this a little bit. Been tapping into this area multiple times, so it's a valid trend. Uh, but we do have this level that we're paying attention to right now mm -hmm. that we're approaching. If you take a look at to the left, so uh, we created this higher low over here. All right, you got this low down here around 149, and then we created a higher low right over here, tapped into that area, flip bullish, and we've had three consecutive days of business days of bullish candles coming right back into this area. But like I said, we need to close above this area for price to be valid to continue right back up to 153, mm -hmm. right? Our next resistance, our next key area over here. You could actually say 153, 250. Um, looking over here at the daily, anything else on the, on the daily you wanna? No. Nope. Okay, cool. So you can always adjust that. We're going most recent support resistance, 152, very critical level over here uh, that we're reacting to. But we've been bullish ever since tapping into this area of 152, 500, right? Multiple times, we've just been pushing down. We've just been uh, bearish over here, coming mm -hmm. right back down to our key area of 149, right? Then we continue right back up to retest that level, and then we start to tank again. Yep. So now, ever since tapping into 149 over here, we've been bullish and we've been mm -hmm. respecting the bullish trend, creating higher lows, higher highs, new support, and then continuing right back up. Now, again, we're starting to approach that consolidation area around 152, also a psychological uh, number as well. So are we gonna react to that and start to come down? Uh, annotation. And right at this level, you also have consolidation, a huge consolidation to the left side. Exit. Right over here? No, even like further back. Okay. So you have that, plus you have a huge consolidation further back. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, uh, reaching this level is, you know, it's it's been touchy once we reached it over here. We created a support around that area as well before coming right back up to 152, 500, but then we just tanked. But mm -hmm. right now we are printing higher lows and higher highs. So you want to trade what you see and not what you just think. Mm -hmm. um, and make sure that candles are closing in your direction before you're entering yep. some of these trades. But looking at the, the hourly, valid trend, price just pushing up. Um, we ended up having a nice trade this morning on the live stream where price ended up breaking around 637, mm -hmm. um, holding this support right over here. We had a previous support over here to the left as well. Then here, you can always extend some of these, but we're nowhere near that right now. But we ended up creating this high up here, 152. Could we be coming down? We're, it's a clean um, range to trade in, but do you want to take sales against the trend right now? Mm -hmm. um, you know, do you want to grab that quick scalp? This is one of those things where it's like a high risk, high reward. Uh, as this four or this one hour candle created a top wick, we broke previous support, closed below it. This candle created a top wick, and now it's flipping bearish. Mm -hmm. Only thing is, market's about to close, so you don't want to really hop in anything right now. Yep. Spreads are kind of crazy too, um, but this is where you could, you know, if you're an experienced trader, you could grab. Um, you know that quick scalp over here where price comes down into this key area and then we continue right back up mm -hmm. uh, but this is where you close the full thing you're not trying to call tops and leave a runner here you're just looking for to grab a quick 10 pips right back down into this area this area specifically and then we take price right back up but um that's again a high risk high reward you typically want to just wait for a support to form and then you take price right back up to retest the previous high. Yep. Giving bad advice out here. <laughs> um, but anyway, looking over here, again, previous support that we just broke on the 30 minute. Candle was about to close bearish on the, on the 30 minute uh, and the hourly. So we'll see if price comes right back down into this area. Uh, but we do have pretty much a clean move to the left over here. Uh, besides this consolidation and the consolidation to the left that Shoma pointed out. And we're we breaking below that already anyways. Breaking below right over yeah. here. 
So another, yeah, the red line that you have mm -hmm. on the chart, yeah, that's price breaking below it. Another key thing that I like to follow is obviously when you're looking for multi time frame uh, confirmation, make sure 30 minutes in your direction, make sure one hour is in your direction, and then look for your scalp opportunities. 15 minutes, just not enough confirmation. But another thing that I do is, let's say I'm on a 15 minute time frame. If I don't, if I don't see my setup in the first, let's say five or maybe even like you know six maybe uh, minutes. I don't look for another entry or like a, a potential entry or force an entry in the last 10 minutes of that 15 minute candle, right? Especially if you're coming close to a 30 minute candle close. So you wanna pay really close attention to that. Right now on this 30 minute candle, you have eight minutes left before this closes. The way I'm looking at this, the way that I analyze it is, well, you had this little support. Every single candle formation pair, I look at it as a resistance or a support, right? So in this case, you got that support that's being formed here by these two candles and a resistance by these two candles. In that 30 minute time frame, price has not once came back up to kind of retest uh, those highs or anything like that, create a top wick or nothing like that, right? It just came right back down. And if there's so much volume, then why didn't we just continue down? So this tells me that right now we don't have enough sellers just yet in the market. We just rejected all these sellers to the downside, pulled right back up and we're kind of sitting in this zone at the moment. So now if I'm going to look for a sell opportunity, I need to see the following candle breaking this little support here and maybe even clearing the wick and then continuing down. Then that's a potential sell opportunity. So analyze those candles and understand what's happening. And like if the candle didn't break the low in the last, you know, 15, 20 minutes and you're coming close to the last five minutes of a 30 minute candle close, you're probably not going to find an optimal entry. Wait for the next candle to form and then wait for that momentum and then follow that momentum to the downside or to the upside, whatever you're trading. It's a great point. Mm -hmm. It's a great point. I think a lot of people could get a lot out of that. Any kind of little tidbits that people like, you want to be a master of your pair. Yep. You want to look at yourself as like the go-to. Let's say if you're in a trading group, you want to be that go-to of that pair where it's like, I know exactly what's going to happen mm -hmm. at 15 on a, on a Tuesday morning, right? right? You want to be that person, not so much for like the ego part of it, but like, like you want to know your business it doesn't matter if it's trading or any other business but you want to know your business inside now better than anybody else yep so that's why you want to know that these pairs and these little tidbits these little nuggets of of how your pair moves at a certain time on a certain day mm -hmm. you know everything helps you want to jot all that stuff down that's yep. you know what we talk about in that other series that we have um Absolutely. all the time and again so. if you guys are interested to come up on the series then let us know we're trying to bring on students as well as other mentors and you know people in just entrepreneurship or you know in trading in general to come and kind of help you guys out throughout the process also if you know of anybody that would like to be on it whether they're experienced or not or in a different industry or not like just send us a message we'll, we'll have them on and, and just talk and the more value that we could bring to you guys and, and the more people we could have on the more value it's going to be so yep um, All right, so that was it for GJ, and then I guess we're going on to gold now. Exactly. So let's get into gold. Gold is uh, pretty interesting right now. We're kind of staying below uh, 1770, 1760 is a pretty significant mm -hmm. level. Um, but again, we always point out if it'll load. Try refreshing it. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Let's get on my markups. There we go. There you go. So there we go. Very significant and very similar price action over here mm -hmm. from the 2008 market crash and, um, you know, price kind of reacting to, to the previous tank that we had. And then we had the monetary policy come in, tapering, increasing interest rates over here. Mm -hmm. We have something very similar. Historic highs. Price consolidating, markets calm down a little bit, many different things going on. You had this bullish push right back up to 1900 area mm -hmm. where we were fearing inflation just like we are right now. And then we get some positive NFPs that came out that pushed us all the way back down to 1680. Um, so we have NFP this week. So we'll see what comes out. Some of this data coming out this week, especially unemployment, uh, is going to be a big deal because the Fed and even 
Powell, of all people, is now um, a little hawkish, you know, mm-hmm. coming out with some hawkish statements right now. So if we get some good data, you're going to see um, the dollar rise. You're going to see gold tank a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's kind of what we're expecting. They're expecting 420,000 jobs uh, added, I believe. So uh, for that to happen, you know, anything above 400,000, I think, would be solid for, for the numbers. And if that happens, then we'll see what the Fed does. But, again, we are in this um, corrective phase over here. We are bearish. Um, when it comes to – here, we'll mark off some of these key levels over here. you got 1680. Oh, mark that off. Uh, we have been – Pretty bullish over here, mm-hmm. printing higher highs and higher lows since uh, pretty much 2017, 2018. We had a lot of uh, geopolitical pressures with Iran and China and then COVID, of course, mm-hmm. pushing price all the way up to 2074, new historical highs on gold. Yep. Um, but then, again, corrective phase. But if you take a look at the monthly, we have this area right up here where price came in, into and rejected three months in a row, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, 1830, I would say that 1830 area, and then we're pretty bearish. And what happened was this current monthly candle ended up closing below this previous area right yep. over here, right? So we got a nice close below with a wick that we could possibly fill. Mm-hmm. Are we coming up to create that top wick over here? And then we get some positive data coming out of the U.S. And then we continue to tank because they are thinking about tapering uh, maybe by November. Yep. So um, we shall see. But looking over here at the weekly. I would also just mark off that zone, Stefano. It's on the monthly Which time one? frame. The support. Right yep. Yeah, I, I just like going down to the lower time frames as much as I can because yeah. we end up moving them anyway. Yep. But, um, yeah, I was going to mark this off on the weekly just because it's a little easier for everyone to see. Yep. Plus, you can see these wicks over here to the left. Mm-hmm. But if you take a look, uh, 1760, 1762, this whole area has been very significant uh, for months now, mm-hmm. uh, even a year or so. So price, you know, Close below, nice clean close below. Candle came all the way back into this range above 1788 and then rejected that area, closing bearish. Mm-hmm. We, we do have a current weekly bullish candle, or not current, but previous weekly bullish candle, where we did pass that low and ended up closing bullish right over here. But we're still rejecting uh, 1760, 1762 over here. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, this candle is bearish, but we'll see what we get. This is, the week is far from over. Uh, we could very well end up consolidating in this area, 1760 area, before NFP or maybe even before, wow, tomorrow's Wednesday already. Yeah. Before Wednesday, uh, time flies. It's, <laughs> it's honestly insane. I mean, it's getting darker now. Like when I wake up, it's, I mean, it's always been pretty black, but, um, you know, even by 630, it used to get, be lighter out. Now yep. it's already dark. It's the worst. But um, anyway... Taking a look over here, I'm actually going to change this into a um, horizontal line. Just makes it clearer. And then we'll mark off some recent support and resistance mm-hmm. with uh, the zones over here. Mark it off as 1760. Um, but right now, we ended up coming right back down to this area. Very significant level, 1720 over here, previous support. Previous rejection area, demand zone for price to push right back up. We rejected it once more over here, and we had this nice, clean, bullish move right back up into the 1830 mm-hmm. area, right? And then we've been in this bearish trend. Yep. Lower lows, lower highs. Before retesting 1720, and then we have some strong bullish candles right over here. But this current candle, this current daily candle, is about to close bearish over here. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how this ends up closing. Looking at the four hour, we're kind of stuck in this range, and I, yep. I'm sure we're going to be stuck in this until probably tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't really be trading gold tonight if I were you. Until like ADP comes out, and then after that you have um, unemployment claims, and then you have NFP. 
Exactly. Exactly. A lot of data coming out this week, but um, let's see. Right now, again, we've been respecting this bearish trend over here. Now we form support. And now we're kind of creating this this higher low uh, and holding this support so far. If we get bad data coming out, you're mm-hmm. going to see price break this resistance and continue right back up to possibly 1806. Yep. Especially after breaking this bearish trend, holding support. If we break this resistance, we could be creating some higher lows over here and just pushing up, right? Yep. But I think we're going to consolidate in here. You'll see it on the one hour. Not much different. Do not trade in this. Mm-hmm. I, you know, it's up to you. <laughs> We're yeah. all adults, but um, highly recommend not trading in this, especially after a week like this week and everybody looking at employment data coming out on Friday yep. uh, for any kind of tapering and investors looking at this. The bank, central banks are looking at this. Mm-hmm. All countries are looking at this to see what, that is going to be coming out of the U.S. So yep, and right yeah. now, uh, same thing like the zone that you have marked off, stuff knows. Mm-hmm. So major sell off, right? And then you have like consolidation, collecting some more orders, pushing back right into previous liquidity areas, and then now pushing back up, right? So pretty much what price just did was this. And so right now you don't have any confirmations of buys, you don't have any confirmations of sells. So just wait until price kind of. You know breaks out of this little zone right here and then whether it continues up or down and then you kind of determine what trade do you want to take absolutely so that so i hope that yeah. uh helped you guys out i hope yeah. uh you guys got a lot out of that and got some good insight into the fundamentals especially from trauma mm-hmm. on, on what she sees going on right now so yeah and if you guys have any questions feel free to reach out if you so there's one person who said they're interested in coming onto our series. So I told them just oh. you know message message me on IG. So if you guys have any questions or anything like that, feel free to comment or just message us on Instagram. You're probably gonna get a faster response on Instagram. And if you're interested on coming onto the series as well and kind of just sharing and talking about what your journey has been like, uh, then definitely message any of us on Instagram and we'll bring you on. Other than that, trade safe, everybody. And, you know, just make sure you're being patient with the data coming out and fundamentally and technically a lot of the pairs sitting at some key levels. Absolutely.